Hello everybody, this is our weekly update for November 20th, 2020. And first of all, I was invited onto a panel discussion with the Goethe Institute and the European Union this week, in, uh, together with uh, Priya Lakhani of Century Tech. And we talked about AI and education on that panel. If you're interested in seeing that discussion, you can go ahead and check out the link uh, to go watch that. And next week, I'll also talk more about AI and machine learning and the kind of problems that we're solving here at the company. So. In connection with Smarter German, Michael, the founder of Smart, Smarter German, another Michael actually, uh, we released stories in the German learning section of Glossika. So if you go into here and you click on story up here, you'll see the story called The Dead Woman in the Garden. After a dead woman was discovered in the garden, the detectives get to work on the case. There's plenty of conspiracy and intrigue and more deaths to come in the story. And of course, plenty of dialogue between all of the actors in the story. So if your German is already at an A1 high or an A2 level, this story is perfect for you because it'll actually push you up into those higher levels, A2 high, into the B1 levels. Uh, there is some material that is, uh, it's a little bit of material that's also B2 level in the story. So if you wanna get your vocabulary pushed up higher, we definitely recommend going through the story. When you click into the story, uh, as our developers are actually still developing some of the skills uh, and the settings in the story, we recommend that you can start off with the listening only mode and then you can uh, go ahead and, and go through the story like this. We also provide a gloss, which is a word-for-word -word translation of the German below the sentence. You can turn that on and turn that off with the, the down arrow just below the sentence. Okay, and up next, we also have some people writing in and asking questions uh, to Glossika. Uh, for example, uh, one frustrated user says, uh, for learning Chinese, if you don't offer pinyin with the tone marks, then Glossika is unusable for me. So any of you who have been using Glossika for a while may or may not know this, but if you're, if you're on the learning the Chinese screen, actually we don't require you to learn Chinese characters, even for, right from the beginning. You can go ahead and go to the listening only mode and you will see everything with the tone marks. And so this is really for your speaking and listening training. However, if you start in the full practice mode, what you're gonna see is a typing guide. And the typing guide just teaches you how to type in that language. For example, in this sentence, how are your parents? The very first word in Chinese is your. So the very first word in Chinese is actually ni, which is a third tone, uh, ni third tone. So if I just type in the wrong answer here and hit enter, there's gonna be a typing guide below that says, your, you should type in ni three. So if I type in ni three, that's basically teaching me how to type in Chinese. Okay, so this, this three is actually required for the typing. So if I change my keyboard to a Chinese keyboard now, and I type in the NI3, the Chinese character now appears. So what we're doing is we're teaching you how to type in Chinese so that later when you get onto social media or you're talking to your friends, uh, you wanna send a message to them, you know how to get those characters to appear. Now the most of the input methods are getting smarter. So all you have to do is type in the pronunciation in Chinese with the tone numbers, and then the software will figure out what are the characters that you want to appear, that should appear there. So if you can't find a character, I mean, if the character doesn't show up, they'll give you a big list of um, other kinds of characters to choose from, and every computer is already set up like that. It's very easy to type. But the, the very first thing you need to do is learn how to type in Chinese. Now with our Thai, actually Thai is kind of set up um, a little bit differently. So Okay, uh, I forgot to mention here with the Chinese. You go into the listening only mode, and now I can see the transcription here. I can also hit the down arrow to see more phonics and IPA transcriptions. Uh, let, me, let me just run that, get that over to the recording screen. Again, on the recording screen, what you're doing is you're practicing speaking. So we show you the text written with the tone marks. And that actually helps you, because now I can see all of the tones. And now I can say the sentence properly. Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's hard to read a sentence with tone numbers in there, so the tone marks help. The same thing with Thai. Now Thai, the, tones act, the tone shapes on, on the letters represent like uh, different contours than they do in Chinese, uh, but you'll have to learn that separately. Again, if I type in here the wrong transcription, or I mean the wrong answer, and I hit enter, um, it's gonna give me, okay, you should type in uh, me with an M and then fan with an M, ha with an R. What are those M and R's and L's and F's after the, the syllable? That just means a mid-tone, rising tone, a falling tone, and a low tone. Okay, so you, can, you don't have to type in capital. It, it's not case sensitive. Or you can just type in the whole sentence using Thai letters if you already know the Thai keyboard. 
um, that may be challenging for a lot of people. So if you can just remember how the sentence is pronounced or how it's said, all you have to do is type in the tone contour after each letter. Now, if I don't want to do that, if I don't want to practice reading and writing in Thai, I just go over to the listening only mode, and now I can see the transcription with all of the tone marks. And it's very easy to read that way. So I can just say, Mi pan hai, hai rut lang. And then I can go ahead and just read that. And I can listen to the recording. Okay, my pronunciation's off a little bit. Mi pan hai rut lang. And then I can go ahead and practice recording that. Mi pan hai rut lang. And it goes on to the next sentence. Okay, so that's, that's just a really quick demonstration of, of how the, uh, the full practice mode and the listening modes work on Glaska. Remember, full practice will also practice speaking and listening, but it's mostly typing and dictation and things like that. So you have to learn how to type. Okay, so the next thing on the list is today and tomorrow, if you're in Taipei, Taiwan, uh, here in the city, and you wanna go meet and greet us, uh, you can go down to the Meet Taipei exhibition in Taipei and we have a booth there and we're there all day today and tomorrow. I'm going to stop by the booth uh, from 9 to 10 a.m. on Saturday and I'll be there again at 4 p.m. on Saturday, a Saturday afternoon. So if you want to come by and say hi, uh, we'll be there. All right, thank you very much and look forward to seeing you next week's update.